Hey everybody, Joe the Bullet here, the Joe you can trust, back with the Walking Dead Rose Spine video. Featuring Cole, this man slaughters, so we shall call him the Cole Slaughterer. This new character Cole is actually a very good character. Not only do I personally think that this guy can be used currently on offense and defense before a mega release of all the new characters coming out this year that are going to be caught up in terms of their base stats. As if you were to combine and add up Cole's attack, defense, and health base stats and compare it with other survivors in the last year, you will see that Cole has around 500 more base stat utility than the other survivors out there. Probably besides Camilla. Camilla's up there with Cole as well. But not only that, if we were to take a look at his kit as well, Cole is very taunt-centric, which would be very nice to have considering for offense, so you can actually taunt control the enemy and then start beating them down. And at the same time, also if you were to use him on defense, he will also lower attack to enemies, which makes him very viable for defense. But let's quickly jump over to his base stats. So as you can see here, in these stats, ranked from highest HP to lowest HP, when we are comparing tank roles, we can see that Cole just annihilates all the other tanks when it comes to HP. Granted, he doesn't win the highest defense, as we can already see Andrea Hold the Line has more defense than he does, and throughout the fight, she's also going to get more defense than Cole. But still, having 2100 HP with 1600 defense gives him more than enough survivability currently in the game before more damage dealers start coming out, which will have the beefed out attack stat. This will let us know that scaling his HP will be extremely nice to do. Granted, when I start building his weapon, I'm going to be building an AP when taking damage, so I don't want him to be too tanky to where the damage done to him percent-wise isn't going to be enough to get his AP where I want him after his turn 1 taunt active. Let's just take Cole's stats here for a second with his defense and HP. If we were to scale that, what kind of numbers we would see. If we're going to use a 40% health leadership skill and not put any health on his weapon, he will be looking around 3,020 HP. If we were to use a 40% defense leadership skill and we ended up putting 40% defense on his weapon as well, his defense would be at 3,244. These are really nice stats for a taunt-centric survivor. Now let's take a look at Cole's character card. His special skill is Berserker, which is nothing new, and every time that this individual does get hit, they will get a stacking 20% attack buff until the end of the next turn. And usually with Berserker specialist skills, Taunt is usually a byproduct of this as it synergizes extremely well as Confuse or anything else really wouldn't guarantee a Berserker stack, so this is good. As we do know, Cole is a very Taunt-centric survivor. Looking over at his Adrenaline Rush, we get mediocre damage to one enemy, but we end up taunting three enemies for one turn. These three enemies also will have a negative 50% attack buff slapped onto them as well. The taunt portion at 66 AP is good enough to actually use him on offense. Combining the taunt plus a negative attack for one turn really makes Cole useful when it comes to defense, as when you're attacking somebody, you'll probably be made for sustain or timeout-ish teams just to drive the battle out a little bit longer. So negative attack won't really be the best there. But if you are to use him on defense and you are getting raided, it would make sense that they're going to be coming at you guns blazing glass cannons. So any chance that you have to lower their attack stat on defense is a great call. And then to wrap up this adrenaline rush, Cole and one other survivor will get pain split for two turns. Considering I think Cole should be a heavy AP when taking damage survivor, then I think this pain split is going to be extremely useful in gaining his AP out back up so he can be alternating his adrenaline rush and his active. And then if anything, we can fit one survivor in between to actually get consistent CC against your enemy. Cole's active is taunt and attack down. This is basically taking a page out of his AR and saying, look, you can do this turn one, and then every three turns you can do it again. Only four times though. But this li literally is exactly like his Adrenaline Rush. Taunt to three enemies for one turn, negative 50% attack for one turn. And being able to use this turn one can be extremely helpful because if you're going up against human shields, you may not need a focus anymore. Especially if the human shield that you are going to use this active on does not have taunt resist. 
Looking at this also on defense, if Cole was to use his active turn one while he is on defense, he can really prevent the enemy from doing a lot, as I really do think turns one and two are extremely pivotal when it comes to attacking, and if Cole can mess you up turn one or throw you off your game just a little bit turn one, and then you have somebody with a turn two active or somebody that gets commanded to use their adrenaline rush turn two, you're looking at some heavy disruption on the enemy team. So all in all, a very nice character. Now as for Cole's weapon, I really do like this special weapon mod. Considering all the disarmers when we attack can only disarm one survivor at a time. You can technically disarm two if you kill somebody and then the next person you hit you crit, you disarm them, but still, you've only really disarmed one character at the end of the turn. While Cole can actually disarm more than one survivor per turn, which is what makes him extremely powerful especially when we start mixing in taunts and Cole is a very taunt-centric survivor. So if you're coming to the table with a lot of special weapon mods raiding a Cole, he can make sure he can stop all of that, and then you're pretty much left with two stats on your weapons, which is not ideal. In terms of what I would actually put on this weapon, is I would go to 40% defense or 35% HP, AP when taking damage, and leave the disarm on his weapon. With the combination of Cole being taunt-centric, AP when taking damage, and this disarm special weapon mod, Cole is without a doubt a force to be reckoned with, not only skill set wise, but in terms of generating AP, because he will be taunting three people at a time. And that doesn't even count the other two survivors out there that may also attack him as well, generating even more AP. As somebody like myself who uses a Dante leader for attacking, and it works out extremely well, AP when taking damage, in some cases, can generate AP faster than if I was to have an AP when attacking leadership skill. And in Cole's case, I think that is the scenario. As for combat mods for Cole, we're going to make an attack and defense combat mod sets. Granted, they're very identical except for one combat mod, but other than that, all the same. For attack, we're gonna go with an HP set and not so much going full-blown defense. I would highly recommend building up his HP as high as possible through combat mods and then try to fit a bonus HP survivor with him as I also think it would be beneficial to be putting AP when taking damage on him as well. So if they have to chew through bonus HP before they even get to the raw HP, he's just going to keep taunting the living hell out of them and disarming their weapons. We're going to go stun resist as if we're attacking, we're going to be going up against range. Reds are going to be a byproduct of range and they're going to have stun weapons as well as stun ARs and stun actives. Since Cole is a very taunt centric survivor and he's going to be taunting often and we're not building a lot of defense but we're going to be stacking a lot of HP so there won't be as much damage mitigation compared to other tanks out there. So we're going to go with a reflect combat mod so that they can do the damage to us, reflect decent amount of damage back, kind of giving you the better of both worlds here so that they take a little bit of damage, your HP is so high, you have bonus HP, Cole will be fine, and then you can easily slap up whoever was hitting you, as it will be easier as well because he will disarm the enemy weapons when he takes damage. Reflect also would be good as well in case the enemy does start bringing some Guardian 2s, and if you happen to taunt anybody, they'll just reflect the damage back to themselves, removing the Guardian 2 shield that is on them so you don't have to waste a turn on your survivors to remove it. Last combat mod, we're going to go Taunt Resist. And the reason because of this is I feel there is a massive push with Taunt within the last few months. So I feel like that's going to be coming around and a lot of people are going to be using Taunt Survivors. So being prepared with Taunt Resist for the upcoming battles I feel is a great call. Now for defense combat mods, exactly the same, but instead of defense first red, we are going to go defense first yellow. We need to make sure we can prevent Cole from getting one shot by a yellow, as that is going to be the biggest weakness for Cole, as we get no usage out of that. Not even a special weapon will be able to proc from a one shot AR. Now it's time for the team comes. I'm going to be doing two attack teams and two defense teams. First attack team, we're going to be bringing in Madison Leader for her attack and AP when taking damage leadership skill. Having a leadership that doesn't give any HP or defense will make sure AP when taking damage goes to the extreme in giving AP when we take damage. As when you take damage, the amount of AP you get is based on the percent HP that you lose. So Survivor A losing 10% HP 
and Survivor B, losing 10% HP and they have two different HPs, will generate the same amount of AP gained. When you don't have a lot of defense, and you don't have a lot of HP, and you start to take damage, you're going to see your AP shoot up possibly faster than if you were to go with AP when attacking. And with this team, we're going to have Cole take control of turn 1, taunt the enemies, and if there's a human shield, we'll benefit from that as well, and we don't have to necessarily bring a focus, have the first two turns to do whatever we would like. And this will give us the ability to easily take somebody out. Come turn 2, we will use Anna's taunt to 3 to further blow up the enemy. If we happen to kill somebody turn 1, then there's only 4 survivors left, Anna taunts 3, only 1 free, so that's not a threat at all whatsoever. If that survivor happens to be a threat, we also will have Shiva for turn 2 active control as well. If not, we can always use Shiva and Dwight come turn 3 for impairs and stuns if things were not going our way in the beginning. With this amount of control, we should be able to eventually unleash a lot of our adrenaline rushes off relatively at the same time, slowly dwindling the enemy down. With Cole, Anna, Dwight, Shiva actives coming up fairly often to where you can just cycle through them should give you more than enough pressure to put on the enemy for them to crumble. Once Dwight's adrenaline rush starts going off and he starts buffing the team with 50% attack, Anna and Shiva will soon follow up with burst damage and Shiva will also apply Confuse to 2 for 2 turns giving this team a well-rounded suit for when it starts popping off. Next attack team will be Premier Carl, leadership skill, so we can start using some blues and yellows. We will use a very brute force approach here with Camilla, Waylon, and follow-up Morgan. If we need to decapitate, we will use Waylon, and if we don't have to worry too much about revives, we can use follow-up Morgan to get the killing blow and then follow up again to do more damage to somebody else. This team doesn't have much turn 2 control when it comes to actives, but come turn 3 is when everything just starts to blow up. Follow-up Morgan Adrenaline Rush, Waylon Adrenaline Rush, and Camilla should easily get you 3 kills. And if you happen to kill somebody turn 1 with this team, then you're pretty much looking at an automatic win. As for the defense side of everything here, we're going to start this off with a Season 2 Sandy Leadership Skill. And now with this, we're going to be bringing in a Rainbow S team. This first defense team, though, is not going to be a timeout team. Granted, it has potential to do that depending on if a very if a team comes that can cleanse debuffs but doesn't really have the offensive pressure to kill you, then yes, it, this will be a timeout team. But if that is not the case, coming in with massive amounts of taunts, heals, and shields with maims, bleeds can result in a win. We bring in Cole and Regan for defensive weapon special mods. Cole will apply disarms if they happen to take him out first, and if they choose not to and they want to go after Regan, who seems to be the more squishy s character, or basically the character that's going to be killing your team, they will have to deal with that confused special weapon mod. If they don't rock a disarm, or if turn one for them goes extremely bad, and that confused starts to proc on one or more survivors, that's going to give your team enough time for Glenn to start applying Guardian 2 shields and healing over time, and then once Princess starts getting her adrenaline popping and her active popping, it will be very difficult to deal with this team, considering there's going to be a lot of pain splits and AP when taking damage going around. Once this starts to happen and Regan starts applying maims and bleeds and healing reduction, your team is going to be struggling versing this team as well, especially once Regan applies focus to the team. That will lose you a turn when you try to apply your confuse and taunts to them. In the case you do not bring a decapitate and you are struggling to kill this team, Sandy has the ability to not only taunt you, but also revive a fallen survivor. As you can see everybody, taunts are now starting to become a very big deal in this game, so start looking towards taunt resist. As for the second defense team, we're going to be rocking a Dante leader. We want to bring in some greens and blues as that is not a bad defense setup as well, especially since we're going to be double dipping with some of our survivors with AP when taking damage. When it comes to turn one pressure, Cole will be there to taunt three. For turn two pressure, we're going to be bringing in Command Kelly. We will want Command Kelly to command either Princess, Mackenzie, Holly, or Dante to give us that turn two pressure. If Princess wasn't commanded turn two, then she will come in turn three with her adrenaline rush and or an active which if she happens to use her active, which I personally think it's one of the best in the games, as it's taunt and elusive, to where she'll taunt enemy survivors and they will not gain any AP from attacking. Once Dante starts healing and applying buffs all around the team, Mackenzie will clear everything that is on the team, or if you happen to bring in Holly, we can go even further down the rabbit hole with elusive and more heals to starve the enemy for AP 
giving us complete control over the fight. As if the enemy is unable to use their adrenaline rushes, it's going to have to come down to their special weapon mods and their actives. And if their actives are not giving them AP when they use them, they are slowly falling behind in the AP game, as teams on defense generate more AP than teams that are attacking. And that's going to wrap up the video of Cole Slaughter. Let me know what you all think of Cole in the comments down below. Do you think this guy is good? Are you going to pull for him? And what are your goals for team comps based on the roster that you have currently? Let me know. Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Please give a nice subscribe button. Make sure you leave a comment down below. Sports greatly appreciated. None of that. I'll catch you all in the next video.